first of all, I would like to take this opportunity to greet all of you. A very happy and prosperous new year. And uh, it was so wonderful to hear the testimonies from uh, Elizabeth and Linda. And I do believe each and every one of us must be having some or other testimonies and stories because our God is not a static God or a dead God or a deaf God or a dumb God, but the, our God whom we are worshiping is a living God. And he is not just living somewhere else, but he is living in each and every one of our lives. And for which all of us can say hallelujah or amen. We are serving a living and loving God. And we are so privileged to have him as our God, and he is not going to sit quiet in our lives. And he is going to do his work in our lives exceedingly and abundantly and beyond what we pray and beyond what we ask. And let me tell you, beyond what we can even think about. He is such an amazing God. He is always working us and he worked in our lives throughout 2022 and I do believe and pray that he is going to continue his work in 2023 also and uh, you all are going to share witnesses uh, and testimonies in 2024 I believe amen yeah this time GCI India became lively <laughs> so I was just wondering what should I speak for this new year and um, definitely I'm not someone uh, one minute Uh, definitely, I'm not someone who is uh, very good at making some uh, uh, personality development uh, lectures, especially these are the personality development lectures we hear so very much during the new year. So I'm not good at that, but God has given me some gifts in my life also. Uh, so uh, I thought, why don't I bring a new year message as pastor also wished a Christ centered new year. Okay, that's what I would like. I would I would like to speak to you uh, this morning. New Year is a time for deep reflection, both on the past year and for the year that is ahead of us. We all heard the stories of Elizabeth and Linda, and we all I do believe like yesterday night, last night, definitely all of us might have thought about it. might have thought what God has done in our lives and uh, we might have thought even about resolutions you know uh, it is a very common practice if not all around the world at least among the uh, Christian world to make some resolutions for their lives so these resolutions are a sign that we in we are intentional about glorifying God in our calling work business home church and private and public areas of our lives. Resolution, sometimes they're good, sometimes we would be able to accomplish, sometimes we won't be able to accomplish them, but still, it is a discipline that we decide to take to glorify God intentionally. So it's up to you whether to take a resolution or not, and uh, there is nothing that Bible speaks about it, but it, I appreciate uh, because it is an uh, intentional effort to bring God, uh, to bring, to glorify the name of God. And most of the times, the pattern of New Year message will be reflect, repent, renew, and rededicate. Most of the times we hear messages with this pattern only. Reflect on what you have done and what you have not done. Repent for what you have done, for what you have not done. And uh, uh, renew your mind with new perspective and then rededicate your life. This is a continuous cycle uh, of practice in our lives every year. Don't you believe, Don't uh, what, what do you say, isn't it? It's the same in all of our lives. But today I would like to bring Christ-centered New Year. Before that, I would like to share with you some of the traditions. As I said, uh, the Christians, we do follow the cycle, you know. Uh, reflect, repent, renew, and uh, rededicate. And there are so many practices also in the world. I would like to bring before you some of the practices 
uh, especially on New Year. Every culture has its own New Year Day and its own philosophical, uh, its own its own philosophy and traditions. You all agree about it. And on this day, usually Jewish people on New Year Day they eat apple and honey together. I tried the combination; it was good. So that uh, uh, the coming year may be a sweet and fruitful year. In order to uh, convey that message, they eat apple along with honey. And in Spain, people eat 12 grapes before it, uh, the clock hits 12. They have to eat 12 grapes, which are representing 12 months, which are going to be both sweet and sour. And in Philippines, sorry, in uh, uh, Czech Republic, people cut apple into two so that they can predict the how the year is going to be. When you cut the apple, if the uh, the shape the inside part is you know if it is in the cross shape, then the coming year is going to be painful. If it comes in the shape of a heart, then the coming year is going to be good. So that's what these people believe. And in Philippines, people serve 12 spherical fruits, which means these 12 months are going to be complete. So these 12 months are going to bring completion in our lives. That's what they believe. So they eat and give 12 spherical fruits. And we all know about the tradition we have in our own country, especially in Andhra and Telangana. The new year... The Telugu New Year is not January 1st. The Telugu New Year is Ugadi. Mostly it would come end of March or somewhere uh, end of March or first half of April. Okay. We all know about this Ugadi Pachadi. You all might have tasted, isn't it? It's wonderful. It's a mixture of all flavors. And it signifies a meaning saying the year that is ahead of us, it's going to be sweet, sour, bitter, and you are going to have all sorts of experiences and we should be ready. And it prepares us to be ready and accept everything that happens in our lives. So there are so many philosophies. There are so many traditions and uh, there are different dates also for New Year. In India itself, uh, New Year is celebrated in various different days in various cultures based on the calendar they use. And Jewish people have four New Year days. Do you believe it? Do you know? They have four uh, New Year days. Each New Year for a particular purpose. A New Year, a religious New Year is there. And uh, a, a farmer's cultivation New Year is there. And academic year is there and other, other things. And all, all together they have four new years. We will not be discussing about all the four new years, but we'll focus on two new years, which we can find in the Bible. So my focus would be, we will be discussing biblical roots and significance behind celebrating the new year. It is not just like we are, we passed a calendar year. So we think we, we got into a calendar, we got into another calendar year. So we have to celebrate. For a period of time, I, I used to think, what is there? This is the New Year, January first. Also, is just like any other day. Why is why is it so significant? What is the big deal of it? I used to think, but after looking at Bible, I started understanding uh, the New Year in a different manner. So I would like to take you through a journey of New Year perspective from Bible. New Year from the Bible. First time we find the new year in Bible, that is in Exodus chapter 12, verses 1 to 2. You all know this is the time of Passover. Israel was in captivity in Egypt and they were celebrating Passover. And there God says, Now the Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, This month shall be your beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. So, the new year, the religious or ecclesiastical calendar, according to the Jews and old uh, uh, or the times in the Bible, starts with Nisan. And I'm not going to discuss whether we are solar calendar or lunar calendar is which calendars are correct and whether both of them coincide, coincide and uh, 
they synchronize together or not. That's none of our business. Here, there is a perspective for the new year. That's where we are going to focus. Here, God comes and says, this month is going to be the starting month of your year. That is Nisan. And how does this month start? This month starts with Passover. So, when we talk about New Year, if we miss the Passover, then we totally miss the very meaning of the New Year. So, the New Year calls us, according to the Bible, to put our focus on the Passover. And Jewish people, they celebrate this day as Ro Rosh Hashanah. Okay, Joe Moses should have been here to help me out. Which is the head of the year or beginning of the year. Okay, this year starts with Passover. For we Christian, we can relate. This year starts with Passover and Good Friday and then Easter. Because Jesus died on the Passover day. So, we Christians, if we could not focus on the cross and the resurrection of Jesus on this new year, we have totally missed the very significance of the new year. And this new year reminds, reminds us that God has redeemed us and he has set us apart. Through the Passover, God redeemed the entire nation of Israel. He brought them out of the chains in Egypt. It reminds about redemption. And imagine, they were already following a calendar in Egypt. Suddenly God comes and says, leave about their calendar. From this month you start your calendar. That's what he is saying here. What does it mean? It simply means, I have set you apart. You are not going to be according to the world. You are not going to be related to your past. You are not going to be related to your chains. You are not going to be related to the bondage that you were in. I am going to set you free completely. That's why I'm not just going to bring you out of the place, but I'm going to break all the connections that you have with your past. First thing he is going to do is change your calendar. It is like Monday here, there, Friday. So if I call Pharaoh and say, Pharaoh, I'll be bringing my goods on Monday, he would be waiting on Friday. So there won't be any business also, there won't be any communication also. So he is completely setting them free from the past, from the bondage, and he is redeeming them. And he is setting them apart as a special nation for them. From the Passover onwards, the nation of Israel was formed. Before that, there was no nation of Israel. So uh, this new year reminds us that God has redeemed us and has set us free and, and completely sanctified us and dedicated us unto himself. He consecrated us unto himself. And not only that, Passover, it tells us not about what God has done already. It tells what God is going to do tomorrow. You know how the Passover is eaten? They have to wear their shoes. They have to tie their towel around them as if they are going to travel. Okay? Just like how we, we put on our shoes and travel bags and pack our bags and wearing all the bags and all and eat. Usually we do that when we are rushing out of time. When we don't have time, we wear all our things and Eat a little, throw the plate there itself and go. So God asks us to eat. God asks the Israelites to eat like that. Not because they have already gone out, but hoping that they are going to completely leave this place. So the Passover is a festival of hope. And this new year is God calling us to set our focus on Passover, which is he is speaking about what God is going to do in the year to come. Amen. As we are going through the new year, as we are going to step in, we have already stepped in new year. As we are going to move forward in the new year, let us be reminded our God, he's, he was not only active and living and loving last year, he is active, living and loving in the year ahead of us and he is eagerly waiting to hear what I can do in the life of my children.
That is what this new year tells us. And we all know that Jesus is our Passover lamb because of which we are having this blessed hope. Our eyes should be focused on Jesus. And this same festival, Rosh Hashanah, okay? This is the traditional anniversary of the creation of Adam and Eve, the first man and woman according to the Bible. So they remember the creation of man and woman on this particular day. <laughs> Through which God is taking our attention towards creation. Okay? Through the Passover, a new nation was born. Through Passover, a new nation was created. And through Christ, our Passover, you and I are made a new creation. The New Year talks and tells us that you and I are new creations. The old is past. As Apostle Paul says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Whatever the disappointments we have in the year past, they are gone. And you and I are made a new creation. Let me tell you, my brethren, we are not made new creation only the day we put our faith in Jesus. We are made new creation each and every moment of our lives. Am I making any sense to you? You are made a new creation every day. If you have any regret for the yesterday, you are made new creation today. If you have failure yesterday, you are made new creation today. If you have committed any sin yesterday, you are made new creation today. Let me tell you, this making new creation is a, is a continuous work that God does in our lives. And continuously, that's why he asked us to renew our mind. He already made us new creation. Now we have to make our minds new through the scripture. So, New Year reminds us that we are a continuous new creation. And old things, whatever we had, they were passed away. We are made new creation through the uh, Christ's salvific acts. Everything that he has done through which we are made new creation. And when we are made a new creation, we have our role as new creation also, which I'm going to talk a little later. Let's move forward and let's see what else Bible speaks about New Year. And we all know that New Year, it is focused taking our attention to Passover. So, the Passover lamb whose blood was stuck with a bunch of his soap over the lentils and doorposts of the houses, which we find in Exodus chapter 12, verse 7 to 27 and 22, represents God's covenant to protect and deliver the Israelites. You all know the Passover lamb's blood was applied on the doorposts of Israelites and the death passed through the city and their houses were protected. So this Passover reminds us about God's protection. And when New Year is, focused, God is taking our attention towards Passover through which he is telling us, my protection is going to be with you. And he made a new covenant through the Passover lamb. First covenant he made was through Passover lamb. And if you observe, even in the Bible, any you, anytime you talk about the Ten Commandments or about any, com any covenant in the Old Testament, how does that start? It starts with saying, I am the Lord who brought you out of the land of Egypt. And that's why the Ten Commandments. I am the Lord who brought you out of the land of Egypt. That's why this covenant. I am the Lord who brought you out of the, the, out of the land of Egypt. 
That is why you obey me or you be committed to me and I am committed to you and you are my children and I am your father. Why? Because I am the one who brought you out of the land of Egypt. In other words, continuously in the Bible we see that God is taking the attention of the people towards the Passover. The same act through which he made a new covenant. And in our lives, God has made a new covenant with us through our Passover, Jesus Christ. So when you talk about the new year, it is talking about... Oh. Sorry, my PPT. <laughs> yeah. When we talk about the new year, it is reminding us about the covenant God made with us. You are not going to step into a new year without any promises. You are not going to step into a new year alone. You are stepping into a new year with this promise that I will never leave you nor forsake you. And you are not going to face tomorrow where Jesus is not going to be with you. This is a covenant that God has made. What is the last word Jesus said? Do you remember? The last word Jesus uttered on this earth was, Lo, I am with you to the very end of the age. You are not going to step into 2023 alone. You are stepping into 2023 with Jesus. Wherever you go, his network follows. And his steps follow. He will be with you, he will never leave you. Not pursuing. This is not just your commitment, my commitment, your desire, my desire. But it is his covenant which he has established through the Passover in the Old Testament, through the Passover Act, in the New Testament, we have seen through the Passover, we, uh, through our Passover, who is Jesus Christ. So the new year reminds us about the new covenant he made with all humanity and about the wonderful works he is committed to do in our lives. This is what biblical new year is talking about. So my slide switched, so let me go back. <laughs> so next, what the new year is talking about? The new year is a celebration. We all are celebrating today. You all are better than Praveen, who used to think new year is, is just like any other day. Okay? We all are celebrating. But celebrating what? That is very important. Okay? This new year, this new year is also called Yom Teruah. I, I don't really am bad at Hebrew. Please help me with this. And uh, this is also called Yam, Yam Teruah. In the modern day, this one uh, and uh, uh, Rosh Shahana, they were mixed together. But actually, in the calendar, they will be in two different dates. But how, how I don't know, these both celebrations have come together. These two new years have come together. And the, which means day of shouting or blasting. It is the first day of the Jewish high holy days. I don't like to call holidays. Holy days. Okay? These are the beginning of high holy days. And in this day, they are all called to shout and to make noise, to make... What is this? This is all about a celebration. Where, what, where does your mind take you the moment you hear the word shout and scream? Obviously to Jericho. How the Israelites conquered the city of Jericho. They did not conquer with the sword. They did not conquer with elephants or horses, any uh, weapons they have, any strength of the people. They conquered the land with just, with a shout of praise. In other words, with worship. So the new year is a time to celebrate and not just to celebrate uh, like drunken monkeys, of course, the deserts are good there, okay? But to celebrate in the presence of God with the shout of joy as a worship. Isn't it such a blessedness in our life? We are starting our day coming into the presence of God and looking our, putting our focus on Jesus and celebrating the new year. And that is what Bible calls us. Start your new year with a celebration. It's with a worship. I do believe we are... 
very biblical today. We came together and we are worshipping the Lord. And another thing is, this particular day, they blow shofar. You know about the shofar, right? The horn, ram's horn, uh, through which uh, they make sound. Okay, this is used in worship uh, and also in battle. Okay, two, two perspectives. Number one, it is used to worship that we already discussed. Second thing is, it is proclaiming the victory. The Israelites, they were blowing this shofar as they were marching around the Jericho city. And as they were marching, as they are blowing this shofar, they were proclaiming their victory over Jericho. I would like to remind you, my brethren, this new year, we are starting, we are worshipping, through which we have already proclaimed the victory over the year ahead. Amen? We do not know what is ahead. We do not know what we are going to face. But let me tell you, in the presence of Jesus, as the Spirit of God is in our midst, because he promised wherever two or three gathered in my name, he is there. I am not prophesying, but I am taking the liberty as a servant of God to proclaim his word from his scripture and say that we, each and every one of us, have overcame the year 2023. Amen? That's what New Year is talking about. Jericho was the first city captured by Israel in the promised land. So whatever is ahead, as we are worshiping, uh, we are uh, we don't have physically shofar, but uh, as through worship, we are declaring victory over the year ahead of us. And another thing is, as the Jewish people celebrate this new year, they blow the shofar reading another scripture. That is Genesis 22. As they show, blow this shofar, they read this. Somebody will be reading and somebody will be Blowing. What is Genesis 22? It is Abraham sacrificing Isaac. That is such a great picture for Jewish people to celebrate. And isn't it so significant in our life? And that is symbolic to our Lord Jesus Christ. How did Jesus got victory over everything? That is through his death and resurrection. So this new year, as the scripture is taking our attention towards Genesis 22, let us keep our focus on Jesus who gave his everything to us. And through his death, we have victory already. Through his death, we are already more than conquerors. I explained you before what is more than conquerors. Okay? So... As we came together, came here and worship, worship the Lord, we are declaring Christ's victory as our victory and our victory over 2023. That's how the Bible asks us to start our new year. And as I said, the new year already made a new covenant through the blood of the Passover lamb. And how do we participate in this new year? How do we participate in God's consecration of us? How do we participate in God's covenant with us? How do we participate in celebrating God and his victory he has won through the cross? Nothing but through communion. So I don't want, I would like to ask you to think about, it. you know, let us not... Uh, just think about what we failed. Let us not think about where we have sinned, where we have fallen. Uh, you know, because Jesus said, "You are a, uh, because Bible says you are a new creation and you are a new creation every day. Okay? Let us take our eyes off us and put our eyes on Jesus. Thinking about what he has done. He made, he made you and me a new creation. He consecrated you and me. He made a new covenant with us. And he is calling us to participate in the celebration. And he is asking us to declare victory over 2023. Because, not because of what we have done, but because of what he has already done. So with this perspective, I would like to ask you to, to uh, look towards the communion. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23 to 26, For I have received from the Lord, which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night 
in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he took the cup after supper, serving, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat the bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. With the hope towards the year ahead of us, with the confidence the, about the year ahead of us that He will, God will never leave us nor forsake us, he has already brought victory for us. Let us celebrate and participate into the life of God and let us start this year with the sign of victory, which is in the blood of Jesus. That's why we say, right? There is victory in the blood of Jesus. And I would like to invite you all to come forward and participate in the communion. As we are starting the new year, the new year reminds us we are consecrated by God and we are celebrating with God in worship and victory. And we are, we are the new creation of God and we are in new covenant with God and we have the communion with God in our hands. Let us participate in what Christ has accomplished for us and, uh, be in, beforehand what Christ accomplished for us for 2023. This is the wine symbolizing the blood of Jesus, which made us qualified to participate in the life of God. Let us celebrate by uh, drinking with Jesus. Let's look unto, the, look unto the Lord in prayer. Father, we are so grateful to you for your son, Jesus Christ, and his sacrifice on the cross. And thank you so very much for your wonderful scriptures, Lord, which takes our attention to Passover and to our Passover, that is your son, Jesus Christ. Through him, O oh Lord, you have given us victory. Through him, we are in relationship with you. We are in your creation and we are committed. We are uh, in covenant with you, O Lord. As we partook in the communion, Lord, I pray this blessed hope may lead us throughout this year. This blessed hope may strengthen us throughout this year. And the hope you put in, you put in our hearts through your commitment to be with us, not to leave us, and not to forsake us, and to protect us and provide us, O Lord. Thank you so very much. For your son Jesus, through him we have this blessed hope. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So in conclusion, my brethren, 
As we start the new year, let us remember that we are made new creation, brought into new covenant and consecrated to have communion with God and celebrate his victory every moment through the heart of worship. It is such a blessedness to start the new year with worship. This new year, each day with Jesus is a chance to run the page on an old way of life and embrace the new one. We are, after all, new creation, covenant, and consecrated people, and we serve the Father who renews us daily by His Spirit and made us more than conquerors in His Son, Jesus Christ. Thank you.